To qualify for the top 10 young duos in 2020, both players must be at or under the age of 25. Based around these pairings value on both sides of the floor, stay tuned for a thrilling countdown to find out the rising one-two punch that can dominate the most over the next decade. Quickly, I want to plug my social media. Follow me on Instagram at dflowhoops to stay fully updated on my channel, as well as for NBA updates, polls, and comparisons. That's at dflowhoops. Appreciate you. The two honorable mentions for this list are Devontae Graham and Miles Bridges, and Darius Garland and Colin Sexton. Number 10, RJ Barrett and Mitchell Robinson. New York center the block nest monster Mitchell Robinson set the record for the highest field goal percentage in a single season in 2019-20 at 74.2%. But Mitchell makes a living and earns his nickname of Block Ness Monster by stuffing shots at a top-notch level defensively. Robinson's rookie season in 2018-19 saw him average an NBA's second-best 2.4 blocks per game. The man who just finished his first season in RJ Barrett is also a lengthy, intelligent stopper himself, so on this end, he and Mitchell should be the foundation of a strong Knicks defense as they gain experience. Offensively, RJ's 32% three-point shot with 197 attempts from out there is something to build off after his rookie campaign. The 20-year-old Canadian Barrett's already an efficient slasher who can create plays off the dribble, but if he can improve his perimeter skills, then he could be an all-star. Robinson's also got to polish his offensive repertoire, but I think New York's duo has a ton of potential and they should be much improved to start the 2021 season. Number 9, Zach Levine and Laurie Marketing. The stretch big Laurie stats took a significant step back in his third season. The 23-year-old's got to produce more than 14.7 points on a below average for his position, 42.5% field goal percentage for this duo to rank any higher. Luckily for Bulls fans, Markkanen's got an all-star caliber teammate in Zach Levine, who's one of the more explosive scorers in the NBA today. At just 25 years of age, Levine's already averaged at least 19 points each night in three different seasons, and this past year, he put up a career-high 25.5 points per game. I just talked about his flashy athleticism in my Top 10 Dunkers video, but in addition to his hops, Levine's an excellent shot creator from the top of the key and beyond. This past season, he averaged over eight three-point attempts per game and shot a very solid 38% from out there. It's a damn shame this guy hasn't been an all-star yet, and once Chicago surrounds him with the right talent, the league better watch out. Number eight, Trey Young and John Collins. Maybe they have to improve a tad defensively, but for the most part, you can't blame Atlanta's miserable past three seasons on Young and Collins. From 2017-18 to 2019-20, the Hawks have a combined record of 73 wins and 158 losses, but the process of losing the majority of your games in a season can sometimes result in significant player development. Such has been the case with Trey and John, who've annually improved their statistical production across the board while learning the crucial lessons that losing comes along with. Now that Atlanta's added Clint Capella in the front court, and that John Collins is about to be a four-year pro while Young's about to face his third pro campaign, the Hawks should be ready to fight for a playoff spot next year. Trey's got a generationally great shooting range and a brilliant passing IQ, and given how entertaining he is to watch, I hope Atlanta makes the playoffs in 2021. Number 7, DeMontis Sabonis and Miles Turner. Unfortunately, the triple-double machine at power forward DeMontis Sabonis missed all of the Pacer games in the Orlando bubble with a foot injury, and Indiana would end up getting swept by the Miami Heat in the first round. In the 62 games he did play in this past season, DeMontis put up a stat line of 18 points, 12 rebounds, and 5 assists. The 24-year-old Pacer Sabonis is one of the most well-rounded offensive big men in basketball. He's also pretty versatile defensively, but his partner in the front court, Miles Turner, definitely makes it easier on this end for him, defensively that is. Since being 2015's 11th overall draft selection, other than his rookie season, Turner's been at least top four in blocks in every year of his career. Overall, both these bigs are unique and dominant in their own right, but they lack just a bit of the star power to rank any higher in this top 10. Number 6, Jaron Jackson Jr. and John ja Morant. Something overlooked amidst John ja Morant's well-deserved Rookie of the Year winning campaign, was Jackson Jr.'s stellar progression in his sophomore season. The seven-foot stretch Big Triple J vamped his scoring, shot blocking, and three-point percentage from his rookie year, but then suffered a heartbreaking knee injury against the Pelicans. Jaron would go on to miss the rest of Memphis's six games, including the play-in game, which was the main reason the Grizzlies squandered the eighth and final playoff seed in the final games of the season. 
but you can't be disappointed in that season if you're a Grizzlies fan because the combo of the explosive soon-to-be sophomore John Morant and the smooth shooting giant Jaron Jackson Jr. showed off its potentially league-dominant threat all season long. Number 5, DeAndre Ayton and Devin Booker. Devin Booker proved himself as debatably a top 20 player with his brilliant production in the bubble. In the midst of leading the Suns to a stunning 8-0 record in Orlando, D-Book hit a game winner in the face of both Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, while averaging 30.5 points per game. The first-time All-Star in 2020 shockingly turns just 24 years old on October 30th, but has already averaged over 22 points in four different seasons and the Suns barely missing the playoffs and finishing the season on fire definitely bodes well for them ultimately locking up Booker long term as this Phoenix team seems poised to make their first playoff appearance since 2010 in 2021. Another reason for that's the old school beast at center DeAndre Ayton. 2018's number one pick had a solid sophomore campaign where he averaged 18 and 11. Devin's playmaking and DeAndre's beastly finishing should allow for this to eventually become one of the better pick and roll threats in the game. Number 4, Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson. Given the MIPBI's elite and shifty shot creating plus Williamson's menace-like finishing, the in and out combination of the Pelicans' two wings is utterly dynamic. One dices up defenders with saucy skills, while the other relies on ridiculous physical gifts plus a high basketball awareness to get his business done. Like Devin Booker, Brandon Ingram was a first-time All-Star, and the former Laker completely broke out of his shell in the Big Easy. 2020's most improved player mightily boosted his three-point percentage, scoring, and playmaking numbers. Brandon Ingram's just 22 years old, yet is already one of the better shot creators in the game as his 7'3 wingspan combined with ball handling skills and flawless mechanics on his fadeaway jumper make him unstoppable. Meanwhile, Zion's freight train-like slashing and strength perfectly mesh with those aforementioned abilities from Ingram. That's the main reason I think this Pelicans tandem can coexist and lead New Orleans to new heights. Also, Ingram or Williamson's ego hasn't caused problems for them in the past, so new coach Stan Van Gundy shouldn't have much of a hard time in that aspect. Number 3, Chris Stapps Porzingis and Luka Doncic. Luka's 2020 postseason was historically great, as he broke an NBA record that stood for 71 years, scoring the most points in a player's playoff debut of all time. Doncic also joined the company of LeBron James, Magic Johnson, and Tracy McGrady as the only players to score 40 points at the age of 21 or younger in an NBA postseason game. However, while his partner in crime, Chris Stapps Porzingis, looks like one of the more intriguing talents in basketball at times, he failed to stay healthy yet again. At full strength, the Unicorn's debatably the most lethal stretch big in the league, and he and Doncic combined to be one of the best duos in the NBA period. But I'm beginning to believe KP's injury prone. I hope I'm wrong though. Number two, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. For eliminating last year's champions in the second round, combining to average just under 50 points in the postseason, I nearly ranked Tatum and Brown as the best young duo in the league. And you could really go either way between these two and the next young duo for who's the best right now. Jalen Brown completely locked up Toronto's all-star Pascal Siakam while adding 22 points per game on the other end. JB is one of the most athletic players in the league right now, and with a player next to him at his position that's even more of an offensive threat than he is in Jason Tatum, opposing defenses don't have an answer to stop these two on the perimeter. Tatum averaged 26 points, 10 rebounds, 5 assists, and 1.2 blocks per game in 2020's playoffs. Here's what really gets you going if you're a Celts fan though. Jason's 22 and Jalen's 24, yet Tatum's made two conference finals appearances already and Brown's made three. Next year, given their unfinished business, I expect these two to come back with vengeance and with the right moves this offseason. Because of this duo's star power, we could very well see the Boston Celtics as 2021 NBA champions. Number 1, Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic. The Blue Arrow might have to be re-nicknamed Playoff Murray because this man turns into a superstar once the postseason hits. Against the Jazz in Round 1, in addition to scoring 50 points in Game 4 and Game 6, Murray scored 42 points back in Game 5, making him the first player since Michael Jordan in 1993 to have three straight 40-point games in a series. In the playoffs overall, Jamal finished right behind Jimmy Butler to post the second most amount of points in the clutch. Meanwhile, his partner in crime, the Joker, you may know as the greatest playmaking big man of all time, 
But you may not know, like his teammate Murray, Nikola is also one of the clutchest players in basketball. During the regular season, Jokic was second among NBA players in last five minute scoring. But he and Murray aren't only the best young duo because they can get it done when it counts. From chemistry to versatility to superstar-like stats, the Nuggets' dominant one-two punch of Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic solidify themselves as the best duo on the rise in basketball. The Community Speaks shout-out goes to Hattie, who says Derek Jones Jr. is the best dunker in basketball, going on to say Derek's able to catch multiple bodies a year, which is even more impressive when you realize he plays less minutes than most guys on this list. Go see who I ranked as the best dunker in my last video. The question for next video shout-out is, which young duo is the most dominant in your opinion? The top five on the Speaks board at the end of 2020 get yearly giveaways, so get your takes in. Subscribe if you haven't already and enjoyed. I'd love to have you. Splash thumbs up if you enjoyed as well. This was D-Flow. See you next video.